While Tumblr's user base has mostly died off by now, in its heyday it was home to some absolutely wild internet sagas. Looking back, we had moments like the sixpence slavery scandal, the chocolate bird incident, and the bone-stealing witch. Today I'd like to delve into an infamous Tumblr tale with you. Let's get into the story of the woman who mailed her amputated toe to a jewelry maker. As you may have guessed, this video will include images of said toe, so please be mindful of that. In November of 2016, Tumblr user Cummy Eyelids posted images of a preserved human toe in a jar. The caption of these photos read, A few days ago I received a very special package in the mail. It contained this amputated human toe belonging to the lovely Royally Oily. Like literally, this is a toe off of her foot. I'll be changing the solution, putting it in a new pretty jar, and potentially making it into a wearable pendant. Taking on this project is so super meaningful to me, more so than any other jewelry project I've taken on, including the engagement ring. I'm so appreciative of her trust in me, and I'm so excited to get to work on this. Cummy Eyelids, whose real name is Lana, is a jewelry maker and taxidermist. She utilizes bones and wet specimens, as well as materials like silver and copper to create pieces of jewelry, which she sells. Lana also enjoys collecting human body parts. She's posted numerous photos of her collection, including teeth that other people have sent her. The girl who sent her the toe replied to this post. Royally Oily, whose real name is Haley, said, Literally brought tears to my eyes. I am so grateful and excited myself. Not only do I absolutely trust your artistic expertise at Cummy Eyelids, but I also feel my body part, yes, an actual piece of me, could not be in more capable hands. I know you will respect and care for my little piggy. I appreciate this more than you'll ever really know. Within a few days, the initial post racked up about 30,000 notes, with many of them being shocked, horrified, or mocking replies. As the post gained more and more attention, quite a bit of misinformation was spread about it. Lana made an effort to clarify the situation, such as in this post where someone claimed that she was going to wear the toe necklace herself. There were also quite a few people who misconstrued the relationship between Haley and Lana. Some people believed them to be boyfriend and girlfriend, whereas others reported on the story saying that they were engaged. Lana clarified this by saying that she and Haley didn't even know each other prior to the toe thing. But I think the most common misconception about this story is that Haley cut off her own toe so it could be made into a pendant. Haley made a Tumblr post addressing this myth. The truth is that she actually had it amputated in 2008 when she was a teenager. She had a condition called brachymetatarsia where her fourth toe was too small and it would overlap the toes beside it. Haley said that she was also given the option of an experimental toe lengthening surgery which she turned down. She ended up wishing that she'd tried it. To address all of the questions but why she kept her preserved toe, Haley wrote, This is a piece of me, and before I expand on the views I have, which led me to keeping my body parts, let me just say that this is a very personal thing. I don't expect people to accept or understand it, but I am totally happy to try and explain. My great aunt is from Mexico, as are many of my relatives. She is also my godmother. The family matriarch, if you will. When I was young, she would tell me a story about a lady who would steal your teeth and then she could control your thoughts and visit you in your dreams. Take this for what you'd like. May it be folklore, brujeria stories, and just silly superstition to some, but these kinds of things helped form my spiritual belief system. I truly felt the need to keep my teeth every time I lost one. Every haircut, I'd bury my hair or keep it with my teeth. There is power and energy in the human body and I do not take it lightly to let mine go. When it came time for my surgery, I knew I had to demand I keep my toe. I did not want my own body to be discarded, or worse, used against me in some way. Perhaps there's not a boogie woman slash witch doctor who steals toes, but I felt very inclined, with a religious dedication, to keep my toe. To be buried or burned wholly, I've known this about myself since a very young age. She also included a section where she advised people on how they can keep their own amputated body parts. Her advice was to use religious freedom as a tool. You don't have to explain your beliefs to anyone or anything. You honestly don't even have to be spiritual or religious. You simply request to keep your parts based on your religion. There's paperwork you have to fill out. You cannot sell human body parts, even if they are your own. So you must sign away saying that you will not do so and that is not the reason in which you are having that part removed, etc. Haley ended off the post by telling other users to stop harassing herself as well as Lana about the toe. She also posted some pictures of her feet where you can see how close her third toe and pinky toe are after the amputation. Haley said that she spent years trying to find an artist willing to turn her toe into jewelry, but many of them either declined to take on the project or just ignored her. She said that this necklace was important to her as her toe was a sign of courage after enduring bullying over it and being called stubby as a kid. 
Regarding the necklace itself, Lana's plans for the toe were to re-preserve it because the preservation expired in 2011. She would then put it in a new jar to be used as a pendant. I tried really hard to find a photo of the completed necklace, but I couldn't. It could have been lost to time, or never posted in the first place, or I might have just missed it. Either way, I'm sorry that I can't show you the final product. If you happen to have an image of it, please let us know in the comments. While a lot of people reacted to the toe necklace with disgust, there were some people who were interested in having parts of their body turned into jewelry. Some sent Lana messages expressing disappointment that they didn't keep their body parts after surgery, while others requested that Lana work with their body parts, including other amputated appendages, slices of brain tissue, bone calcifications, and removed medical implants. Lana said that she was totally open to working on more human projects and was very excited by this. She continued to post on Tumblr and sell her creations, although to my knowledge she never posted about receiving any more amputated or removed body parts. However, all was not well for long. At some point, Lana's Tumblr account was terminated, so she had to make a new blog. Then, in 2018, Lana was at the center of another controversy surrounding human body parts. This time, it was bones. As you've seen, Lana loved bones. There are plenty of pictures of animal bones that she fashioned into jewelry or sold as is, she also had a human skull, which she liked to pose with. She attested that all of the bones she collected were authentic and that she wanted to grow her collection. In November of 2018, Lana made a post titled, OMG, y'all need to see what my friend just scored at a flea market. This contains several photos of a human skeleton with the caption, My baby girl Emily at Queen of the Wild Things got this gorgeous antique partial human skeleton at a flea market for only 30 bucks. All she was told is that it's from a university. Beyond that, we have concluded it's a female and she was probably pretty young based on her petite size and non-pronounced brow line and unfused cranial sutures. If anyone has any further info slash conclusions based on these pics, please share it with us because we want to learn as much about her as we can. You can tell from the green moss stains and the rusty metal bits used for articulation that this cutie clearly has some interesting history. As you may have guessed, this post did not go over well with other Tumblr users. It garnered over 18,000 notes, and other posts about the situation reached upwards of 100,000 notes. Users were quick to point out that this was the same person who'd received the toe almost exactly two years prior. Some people questioned whether or not the bones are real, as well as the legality of owning human bones. United States law doesn't prohibit anyone from buying, selling, and owning human bones. And, while Etsy and eBay banned the sale of human remains in 2012 and 2016 respectfully, they can still be procured pretty easily from online shops as well as Instagram. However, there are restrictions in several states. These are Georgia, Tennessee, and Louisiana. However, because Lana was living in Maine at the time, owning real bones would have been legal. Lana said that she believed the skeleton was donated to a scientific teaching facility many years ago and was eventually put up for sale at the flea market after becoming too damaged for their purposes. The skeleton being found at a flea market for such a low price point does make the authenticity of it a little dubious. For reference, real skeletons from the website I showed earlier, Bone Room, cost over 5,000 US dollars. According to some other users, someone who claimed to be an anthropologist responded to the post saying that the skeleton was fake. I wasn't able to find the post itself, only other people referencing it, so I'm not sure what their justification for it being fake was. Also, please keep in mind this is Tumblr, so there's no way to verify this person's credentials. There were others who believed the skeleton was real and claimed that it was the bones of a young Asian girl with some guessing that she was about 5 years old when she passed away. Many of these users pointed out that, if the skeleton was real, it may have come from a child in a disadvantaged position and have been obtained through disrespectful or unethical means, rather than being a donated medical specimen, as Lana previously claimed. Tumblr user It's Alberton summarizes this discourse in a post, saying, Some people reacting to this have extrapolated that the skeleton was from a third world country in Asia and that the university that originally possessed it obtained it illegally. Based on stories they have heard, and yes, medical research does have a history of doing sketchy ass shit to get data, and have concluded that cummy eyes is racist for possessing stolen aboriginal remains. I would say that the brunt of the backlash against Lana came from people who argue that collecting and displaying human bones is disrespectful to the person that they belong to, especially because in this case it's unknown if the person ever consented to it. The ethics of human bone collecting has actually been discussed in a paper called The Insta Dead. The Rhetoric of the Human Remains Trade on Instagram by Damian Huffer and Sean Graham. They analyzed how people promote, sell, and discuss their collection of human skeletons. The authors point out that the language that these sellers and collectors use is reminiscent of 1800s anthropology and archaeology, because acquiring these bones is more important than acknowledging them as people. This strips the people who these bones belong to of their humanity and turns them into commodities to be displayed. The authors said, 
The ability to sell, display, or trade human remains via social media and online distribution lists has led to their being treated as consumer products for a collector's market, rather than objects of archaeological, ethnographic, or anatomical value. While there are plenty of different beliefs around the world about how human remains should be handled and what's respectful, it seems like disapproval of them being collector's items is fairly widespread in North America, especially within the field of archaeology. As the post racked up more and more notes, Lana received a ton of messages from people saying that she shouldn't keep the skeleton or collect human bones. She generally responded to these by saying that she didn't care what they thought and she would do what she wanted. I think the post that most clearly illustrates her position on the matter is this one here where someone says, There's a very clear, fine line between interest in the morbid and outright disrespecting what was once a living, breathing human being and you've crossed it. Even disregarding the obvious discomfort, this girl did not consent and could not have meaningfully consented to you owning her remains. That is why people are offended. I don't hate you. I'm not sending this in anger. But you seem to either not get it or be deliberately not engaging with this, and I don't know which is worse. To this, Lana simply replied, I don't care. She's dead. This sentiment was echoed by some users who defended her from the backlash. These defenses generally range from saying that Lana was being respectful by caring for the skeleton instead of leaving it at the flea market, or that collecting bones is simply a hobby and there shouldn't be any outrage over it. However, although she acted mostly unfazed, Lana ended up taking down the skeleton post after the backlash. She claimed that this was not because it was fake, but rather because she and her friend were tired of getting questions about it. She also offered to send anyone more pictures of the skeleton should they request it. So, there we have it, the tale of the mailed toe and the additional aftermath of the flea market skeleton. If you're by chance interested in seeing Lana's current creations, she has an Etsy shop where she sells taxidermy, wet specimens, and jewelry. If you like stories about weird internet drama, you should check out my video on the Snape Wives, it's my favorite topic that I've shared on this channel. And if you can't get enough of bone drama in particular, I'd like to suggest this video on the Tumblr witch who stole human bones. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.